How's it guys? This is an exciting day for my channel. Uh, Tron who reached out to me to test their best G220S printer and um, I agreed to it and I said that I would give an honest review. So guys, I didn't pay for this, this printer, but um, I haven't been paid for this review. So they've given me a, a demo unit here to work on and to test and to show you guys. But just guys, I want you to know this is my honest review. This is what I feel about it. And uh, yeah, let's go. Let's see how it goes. So I'm going to show you what's in the box and then we'll quickly assemble it and uh, we'll try a test print and see how it goes. So out of the out of the box, it doesn't look too bad. It's a very sturdy construction. It's a quite a heavy base, this. And then you've got your, your gantry set up here and you've got a box of spares. So in the box, you get your, your printer, the main printer body. I did notice that this is very, very loose. So we're going to have to adjust this before with the are concentric nuts so we can adjust this and may and tighten it up before we start printing but at the moment it's very loose um, and then you get your gantry set up your gantry setup is held in place with a couple of uh, pieces of piping if you check over here there's a couple of pieces of piping that just hold everything preventing it from sliding around too much so i think what we do first is we uh, as i look through here how's it guys uh, i will uh, oh sorry in the box, we get a assembly man manual. They sent me the 220S, which is the silent driver with not the 220S light. Uh, so I've got the one with the silent drivers here. And um, it comes up with, with backup nozzles. So basically, here's a list of what you get. So you get the gantry, you get the base, the spool hole is inside the box here. You get your screws, which is inside here. You get your four screws to fasten your gantry to your base. Uh, you get a power cord, which is this one here. You get a, let's see what this card is, a little SD card with a USB converter. So this is eight gigabytes, not bad. Okay, so we'll see what's on this before we print. So that's there, you get your set of tools. Okay, so you've got a couple of Allen keys here and your wrenches. You've got a spare fuse. Hopefully it's a spare, not the, I think it's a spare. And there's two nozzles here. Is there a nozzle already in the printer? Yes, there is. So they give you two spare nozzles, uh, which is quite nice, I think. Uh, so there's two spare nozzles here and some screws. Not sure what these are for yet. Uh, you also get two little test pieces of filament. We'll use this to, to uh, print our test and we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll check out our runout detection there because it's got a runout detector. And then you get your your uh, spool holder and you get your cutters pretty standard pair of cutters and a rogue screw so that is a little bit concerning I don't know where this goes so this fell out of somewhere obviously in moving so I'll have to have a look around and see where this screw belongs so that's it and what else is in there uh, we've got another rogue screw so there's a second screw here, which is a little bit concerning, guys. Oh, I know what those are for. Those are for the gantry. Okay. All right. So they're not they're not rogue screws. They're for the gantry. Uh, there's your two screws, and now in my haste, I've lost the one. Doesn't matter. We'll find it soon. Okay. So there's your that's to mount your gantry up on the top. Uh, it would be nice if these were inside a plastic packet um, and yeah so that's it and then you've got your instruction manual here on how to assemble it and um, all your your touch screen over here you've got your touch screen settings all that kind of stuff so yes this is this has been labeled as a semi diy 3d printer meaning that it's not you don't need to be too diy um, focus in order to get this printer set up so i've been told that it shouldn't take more than five minutes to install this gantry so i think let's let me do that quickly and then i'll come back to you and we'll see how that went so hopefully all goes well i don't want you guys to uh, see me looking like a bit of a, a nanny here trying to get everything together but i will put the gantry on and um, i'll let you know how long it took give me a few seconds 
Okay guys, so that took me about eight to 10 minutes to put the gantry on. It's a little bit fiddly. It took me a little while to work out on my own how to do it. Um, you know, if you have a second person around with you, they can hold the gantry while you find the holes to screw everything in. But on your own, it's a little bit difficult. And what I found is if you hang it off the edge of the desk, screw in your first screw. Once you got your first screw in, you can tilt it up and then you can get access to the rest of the screws and then it's easy. Um, the other little bit of a criticism I've got is this Allen key is long enough on this axis to get in there and put the, the bolt in. But the problem is this side is too short to get your lever to tighten everything up. It seems to be very stable. Um, the design is a, a 20 by 20 bar or a, a 40 by 40 bar inside here. Uh, that holds the gantry on which is nice and stable and strong so uh, I have seen builds like that that have got the complete uh, enclosure like this where this is now just screwed onto the sheet metal and it's actually very wobbly so uh, quite impressive how sturdy this is the next thing I need to do is go tighten up all of my concentric nuts because they all loose obviously it's a shipping uh, thing that they decided to do so I'm going to go and tighten up all the concentric nuts and get that working and then I'll come back to you and we can turn this puppy on. So, so far it actually hasn't been that painful. I'm quite impressed with the build quality of the printer, but we'll talk more about that now now. Right, so now I've got all the concentric nuts uh, all tightened up and we've got our, our build plate here nice and uh, secure and everything on here secure. Uh, there are three wires you need to plug in, one for the stepper motor for the Z axis which by the way was very loose so be careful of this when you're first building this printer make sure that uh, you check all your belts and all your uh, all your screws that everything is tightened up you then got the cable over here for the limit switch for your z-axis and finally there's a big ribbon cable on the front here that connects up all your other parts at the top here on your steppers i mean on your extruder and on your x-axis and these all go into one area and it gets plugged in here this plug was a little bit finicky to get in, but not too bad. Okay, guys, um, I don't think you need to be heavily uh, literate in DIY to connect this printer up. It is relatively easy. Um, I haven't actually even looked to see if there's, there's any instructions. I've just done everything on my own. So very little in the way of instructions. This just basically tells you to put the four screws in and put those on and that's it. And then of course, we need to now finally put this. I'm gonna put this on here and I'll come back to you shortly. And there we go, we've got the spool holder on, no fuss. The only one odd thing is that this Allen key is bent. I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah, this came bent in the kit. So I'm not exactly sure why this was bent, but yeah, that's one, so that's a small down. We'll just keep on going and see how it goes. So now I'm just gonna plug this machine in, turn it on, and let's see how it goes with our first turn on. Okay guys, so uh, I've moved the printer to this side. Let's turn this on and see how it goes. So off the bat, fans are not that quiet. Not as quiet as I was hoping. All the fans are spinning up and uh, well, the fans are quite noisy, but we'll see what the um, what the rest of the printer looks like. The interface looks really nice, as you can see here. Let's home our Y. Let's home the X. Very nice little interface here, I must say. And uh, I'm a little bit nervous to home the Z because I have not leveled the bed yet. But let's bring it down. Right, okay. There's going to be quite a bit of a gap, so we're going to have to level the bed and make sure that is all leveled. I must say the fans are loud on this thing. Not quite as quiet as I was hoping. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to level the bed and uh, then we'll try out a test print and see how this goes. Right, so it turns out we can't level the bed because the Y axis is too high. The limit switch that is over here, we need to pull that down a fraction. So I'm going to play around with that and get that sorted out and then we'll come back and try out again, get that bed leveled. Right guys, so I've leveled the bed. Uh, it's got assisted leveling, which means that it will take you, as you can see here, to each point on your, on your grid to actually level it. You know, this machine to me was said to be aimed at the DIY enthusiast but really the amateur DIY and uh, yeah 
you need to be a little bit DIY-ish to use this printer out of the box. You need to get your adjustment right for your Z-axis. That's not come set 100% out of the factory. Um, and your manual bed leveling is a little bit finicky. It does take get a bit of use to. Um, and also these thumb screws that are here. Uh, at first I thought they were okay, but they're a little bit on the small side. It would have been just a little bit bigger, would have been great. So I think the thumb screws need to be a little bit bigger. But other than that, so far, the machine has been actually a really good solid machine, solid build. After I've shown the, the print and then sort of like my initial feeling about the printer and then we'll take it from there. Thanks guys. Hey guys, so uh, it's the next day and um, I've done a couple of prints and we've had one or two, one failure, one failure and the rest were all success, great successes. So this failure here is the first one. Um, this one here had a lot of layer shift. Now the reason I found out was I, pulled, I stopped the print at that far and I found out that the belt drive on the, uh, on the Y axis was loose. This belt was very, very loose. So I tightened it up. The mechanism can be improved a little bit. It, it uh, you undo four screws and you move the whole the whole thing to tighten up your stepper motor. You move it back to tighten up your belt, uh, but it's very hard to hold it there and then tighten up. I think a better solution here might be a screw from this side where you can just screw to tighten up and then tighten the four bolts. But other than that, uh, once I got that sorted out, I got a successful print. This print here, I was on the SD card. Speaking of the SD card, one thing I didn't notice yesterday before I started to really wanting to assemble this thing really quickly was that on the SD card is a full set of a full video instruction on how to assemble the machine, which is really nice to see. Okay, so check that out before you before you do anything else with this machine, and uh, you want to you'll want to run through that video and then assemble the machine. So I printed this out, and uh, as I mentioned before, this has a a run out detector on the filament. And this ran out of filament the night before. Okay, so this ran out last night, and then I continued the print with the new filament. Okay, and guys, this head moved up, the plate moved all the way back. I was allowed to change the filament, and I clicked resume. This started so perfectly. I cannot tell you actually where it started because it started so perfectly, uh, realigned itself and resumed the print with a new color. I actually think the elephant looks rather cool like this. So it was uh, it was really impressive to see how well that filament run out detection worked and then the reset after that. So when you resume the print, the print resumption was very, very good. So then I decided to print uh, a benchy. Now this benchy here is from this machine. Okay, so I printed this benchy, but I printed this benchy with the exactly the same filament, so the exact same settings on my Ender 3. Uh, the quality on this is quite amazing, but on this is staggering. I'm actually quite impressed with it. Remember, my Ender 3 is very, very modified. I have worked very hard in tuning that printer, putting different uh, uh, extruders on, different Bowden tubes, uh, upgrading the motherboard, all of that on my Ender, and I've got to this level. I started almost at the exact same level uh, with this machine stock out of the box, which is impressive, guys. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you agree with me, but I think that is absolutely impressive. And then finally decided to print a, uh, a vase mode. Just wanted to see how well this adheres. And then all you do is just bend the plate and off it comes. Really nice. This magnetic plate is very useful. I always struggle putting magnetic plates back on properly. And uh, on the first time, it never goes exactly lined up first time. But great magnetic plate and the bend uh, to break off the print is, is magnificent. So, and also if you look at this vase mode, there's no artifacts, there's no blobs, there's no faults, there's no failures, there's no under extrusions. So a very impressive vase mode straight out of the box. So all in all, I'm actually very impressed with this machine, but I just want to say there are a couple of disappointments. Out of the box, the uh, Z limit switch over here was not quite in the right place. I had to move it down ever so slightly to level the bed. The bed wasn't leveled. I didn't expect that, but the bed wasn't leveled. I had to level the bed um, and get that right. And then finally this belt here 
was very very uh, very loose the touch screen on this is absolutely amazing uh, i'm really impressed with the touch screen it works really well there is another fault that i found but that software if you open up the the touch screen and you go to the menu to go and print a a print most times the first time you go into that menu after putting the sd card in, it's blank you then got to click back and go into files again and then it shows up the the files that you can print so i'm not exactly sure what that is and what that bug is from but uh, that's a, a marlin 1.1.9 uh, version that is on here and that is um, that is obviously there is a mistake there is a bug there but all in all this machine is very solidly built it's this machine version that I have got not the TMC 2208 drivers which the one model up from this comes uh, the 220s this is the 220s light so uh, really other than that the machine quality is good uh, I'm not going to speak too much more about reliability and all that. I want to give this a week to test this printer, run it through, and then I'll do a follow-up video on specs of the machine. And I want to look at the uh, the main board and see what the main board is. I want to look at the uh, power supply and make sure it's a meanwhile power supply, which I don't think it is. I think that only comes in the 220S version, the middle of the range version. Uh, so other than that, that's it for this video guys please consider subscribing to my channel like this video if you like what you saw and go check out tron who i'll put the link down below uh, these are very very good printers this one cost i think 250 dollars uh, which is a good price range in the end of three price range guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this let me know in the comments what you thought and we'll see you back soon cheers